Hello and welcome to chapter 1, part 5. The aim of this part is to add inputs to our game so that we can eventually get our character to move. Now to add inputs to our game we can go to edit at the top and choose project settings. In this settings window you will see on the options on the left hand side an option for input. In the main window here you can see we have various options available to us. The main thing we're looking at here are our bindings at the top of the screen. And you have two types, you have your action mappings and access mappings. These two types of mappings vary greatly. And an action mapping is either on or off. These are button pushes, things that you want the player to click and either activate or not do anything at all. An access mapping is an option for the player to use an input which gives you a range of values between 0 and 1. This could be things like triggers, analog sticks and mice inputs. So access mappings are often seen in racing games for the throttle or gun games for the trigger of a gun. Action mappings are used for things like beat em ups where you want inputs to be fast and reliable. So again, action mappings output either 0 or 1 and access mappings give us a range of values between 0 and 1. Now for our movements, we can click on the add action mapping or add access mapping. We're going to add a new access mapping. So click on the new plus button there and expand open the options. And here I can name my action, my access mapping, sorry. And I'll name this one move forward. When I've named it, you'll see I have an option to choose what key I bind to this mapping. And if I click on this drop down here, I can choose which I uh, which input is going to be mapped to that event. I'm going to search for the W key in my keyboard options. Scale, you'll leave as one. Now for move forward, we can actually also make that also use uh, for move backwards as well. So rather than making a separate mapping, we can use the same mapping here to control the backwards movement. So click on the new plus icon next to move forward to add another key to your option here. And choose the S key. The scale this time will be negative one. And that's because we want to do the opposite of what we intend to do with our event. So S is move backwards, which is opposite of move forwards. So W is 1 and S is minus 1. I can also add my, my gamepad inputs here too. So I click on the plus icon again, and I can choose a gamepad input as well. And this will be the left thumbstick and be the Y axis. Once we move forward done, we can make another axis mapping. This one's going to be move right. You'll notice as I type a lot of my variables and events and functions that I use this sort of format where I capitalize each word. Doing so makes it much easier to read and understand. So once I move right, very similarly to what I've done with move uh, forward, I'm going to choose the D key for move right with a scale of 1 and do the opposite one which is the A key with a scale of negative 1. Click on move right again Make another one, and that would be a gamepad, left thumbstick, x axis. We're going to add another axis mapping for look up. That's going to be a mouse input in the y. The scale for this will be minus one, and the reason why it's minus one is because in computers, going up is a negative and going down is the positive so if you're looking up you want to make that a negative number so minus one will make that a negative for us therefore push it up we don't need to do look down as mouse y will do that for us a movement in the mouse will do minus numbers for us add another one to it and that'd be our gamepad and that'd be right thumbstick y axis click new axis mapping and this one's going to be two, called turn. And we'll use that to be the mouse X. And make our gamepad right thumbstick X axis. We're also going to add one more action mapping to this as well. Click on the new action mapping. And we'll call this one interact. And here you want to choose the key you want to use interactions with. I'm going to use the E key. And I'm going to use my gamepad, face button, bottom. 
With action mappings, you can also add uh, these modifiers, Shift, Control, Alt, and Command. If I were to tick that as Shift, that means that this interact requires E and Shift to be pressed at the same time in order to activate it. So it's modifying the input. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to click the Shift off. We are done with this now, so I'm going to click Close on our project settings and go into our player character. On the event graph of our player character, we can see the default options of begin play, act begin overlap, and tick. I'm going to remove these three by selecting them and pushing delete. Because I've now got an input setting set up for our mappings, I can right click on any blueprint like so and search for move forward. And it's with these that I can now start working on my code, which is what we're going to do in part six. Thank you very much for watching chapter one, part five. And I'll see you in the next part. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.